A lot of portfolio websites have some sort of a timeline which you can use in different ways. You can show your job and education history, your blog posts and really anything else that can be structured in a timeline. You can potentially build this on your own or you can use one of the existing plugins which are very easy to set up and look pretty good out of the box. I will show you one of those plugins and an example on how you can generate all of the elements with some simulated data and you will have your own timeline in no time. This is what we're going to make. It's a simple timeline with some simple layout, design, nice colors uh, that you can use to showcase your previous jobs with some work history, with some uh, dates, with some descriptions, some different icons, and you can also show your education history. And for this example, this is going to do, uh, we're going to pull these from a file which is going to simulate our database. But like I said, you can use this in a multitude, multitude of ways and show pretty much anything that fits into a timeline. So let's start. I already have a new React app set up. So what I basically did was create a new React app. To install a new React app, you need to uh, enter a command, create React app and give your app a name. Let's give it a name timeline hit enter it's going to create a new react app with the folder inside of a folder called timeline i already did that you are also going to need one plugin like i said for the uh, timeline uh, which is this one it's the react vertical timeline component and you can install it by using this command so npm i react dash vertical dash timeline dash component it's going to install and then we're going to implement all of the stuff from it. Like I said, I, I already have a new React app, which I didn't do anything special with. I simply, remove, re I simply removed all the CSS from app CSS. I removed all unnecessary things from app JS, uh, where we are just returning a div with hello world and we are importing the CSS file. We are not touching index.css and we are not touching index.js apart from me removing the, uh, all of the unnecessary things from it. Uh, we also have two SVG images, which were the images that I showed you in the, uh, in the, in the finished example, which are for the work icon, I use the monitor icon and for the school icon I use sort of like the, 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 the college cap thingy that you wear on your gradu graduation ceremony or whatever. And we have another file here which is called time uh, elements. Uh, timeline, sorry, timeline elements.js which is our simulated database. And inside we have one property called timeline elements, which is an ar array of objects. And each object has the same properties, which are the ID, which is uh, something that we are going to do when we are mapping this into, um, into JSX, because React requires us to have a key. So we are using the ID as a key. Then we have a title, which is the title of your position or the title. Basically, it's the title that is going to be used on top of the card for the timeline, uh, for, each the ti for each of the timeline elements. Uh, for the job positions, it's going to be your job. For the school, it's going to be whatever college or school you finished. Uh, I, for most of the stuff I used, uh, like uh, stuff that I found online, like generated generated college names, fantasy college names or whatever from a website I found. Then in the description, you have a description of the job that you worked on or description of the college you attended or whatever. Then we're going to have a button text, which is going to determine if we have a button on that timeline element. And if we do have a button element, what is going to be uh, the text uh, on top of it or inside of it. Uh, then we have a date, which marks when did you uh, go to college? When did you go to school? When did you work on that uh, particular job post? And we have a property for icon. In this case, I use only two, two different values. So we have work for work elements and there is school for school elements. And depending on which one we have here, we are going to do some uh, 
we're going to make some logic based on it to determine which icon should be displayed and which colors should be used for that uh, for that card. So you can set this up really quickly. And uh, like I said, this is simulating a database. If you already have a website that uses a database, then you can use that, but you need to set, set it up based on this. So right off the bat, I'm going to import the icons that we're going to use so we don't forget to do it later. So to import the icons, we're going to say import react component as and then we're going to name the component that is going to represent the icon and we're going to say uh, work icon from work.svg now i didn't do any specific folder management for this project because it's a it's a really um, simple project but of course you should take care of that like I have all of the stuff in just in the source folder, which you shouldn't do. Uh, but for an example project, this is fine. And the other icon, I can just copy this, paste it over here. And we're going to say school icon from school.svg. We are also going to import the data file. So I can say import timeline elements from timeline elements and we are going to map these later then we need to import the actual plugin stuff so we do it like this import and we have two things vertical vertical timeline and vertical timeline element from and this is a huge string so react vertical timeline component and there is also some accompanying css which we can import as well and it's react react vertical timeline component slash style dot min dot css uh, you don't necessarily need this, but it has already some stuff set up in, in, in terms of the um, uh, paddings and margins, which I don't want to mess around with. And uh, But if you don't want to do it, you can just chuck this out and create your own styles, which we are going to do for some, some of the elements. Now we are going to delete the hello world and we are going to set up an h1 heading which is going to say simply timeline and then we are going to set up the vertical timeline which is just a container and inside we are going to start mapping out the timeline elements so what we're going to do is this we're going to say timeline elements map and inside we're gonna say element should map to this. And this needs to return a lot of different things. So it's going to return a vertical timeline element, which is basically one of the cards that is, uh, that is uh, inside of the timeline. And they have different properties that you can uh, that you can control like a lot of different properties so for starters we're going to set up the key which is element dot key if you remember that's the ID that we've set up so after that we are going to use the date as element date so this is already sort of embedded inside of a plugin um, you can pass in your date uh, as a date property inside of a vertical timeline element and it's going to show on the other side. So if the card is on the left, the date is going to show on the right and vice versa. So we already have the element date set up. Then uh, you can set up a new class name for the date, which we are going to do because we are going to uh, change its color a bit. So date class name equals date. Now, 
you can also pass in icon style, which is an object that contains all of the CSS for uh, the icon. What we want to do with this is we want to set we want to set up two different styles for two different icons. Uh, if you remember, we're going to have a work icon and a school icon. So we do it like this. So before we return, I'm going to set up a property called is work uh, is work icon, which is going to be equal to element dot uh, icon equals work so what does this mean this means that if element icon equals work this is going to be true if it equals something else this is going to be false indicating it is not a work icon and for the icon style we are now going to say if it is a work icon we are going to set uh, work icon styles, which we don't have yet. And if it's sorry, if it's not a work icon, we're going to set school icon styles. And we like I said, we don't have these yet. So I'm going to define them right now. And we're going to do that right before we do any return. And we're going to say a let work icon styles equals an object, which is just going to have a background. And for the background, we're going to set the color. And this is 06D6A0. And we're going to do a similar thing for the school icons. And we're going to say let school icon styles equals and for the color we are going to use F9C74F. So as you can see one is the sort of the green color and one, one is the orange or yellow color or whatever. So like I said, if this is a work icon, we are going to use work icon styles. And if not, we're going to use school icon styles. So that's good. And now for the icon itself, we're going to do something similar. And we're going to say if icon uh, is a work icon, then we are going to use the uh, work icon component that we've set up above and if not we are going to use the school icon component that we set up above and you can see the monitor icon pops right in for the work icon and the the hat is inside of the school icon so that's great that's all working now inside of the timeline element we are going to continue setting up things so first we have an h h3 which is a title which is going to have a class name which is uh, this plugin specific uh, class name for the for the title which is the vertical timeline element title and in there we are going to say this is going to have a value of element dot title which is what we've set up in our uh, file and you can see this is exactly what that is so uh, all of our all of our titles are uh, shown properly below that we're going to set up an h Five for the subtitle which is going to have a class name of vertical timeline element subtitle and in there we're going to say element dot location and if hit save you can see we have the location showing up after that we have a paragraph which is going to have an id of description and in there we're going to simply pass in the value of element dot description 
and everything should pop right in as you see now for the button we want to implement a logic which says if the button has a text we want to display the button and depending on the text uh, we need to uh, use different styles for the button and we do it like this so we are also we are we are going to add another checker property which is going to say uh, show button meaning should we show the button and we should show the button if element dot button text not equals to undefined and element dot button text not equal to null and element dot button text not equal to an empty string which means if the elements button text is undefined or it's null or it's an empty string we're not going to show the button now we are going to use this we are going now we're going to use this property in here to make our check so if we should show button then we should also show the button and for the button we're actually going to use a link element and for the link i'm going to set up a dummy link and in there i'm going to say uh, for the text we're going to say element dot button text and like you see we have the um, we have the element showing here now for its class name we need to set up some logic as well and it is going to have a class name of button because it's always going to be a button but in a specific use case where this is a work button sorry a work icon if we are using a work icon then it's going to have a class name of work button else it's going to have a class name of school button and we need to set these up as well and for the html and for the logic that is actually pretty much it now we're going to move to the scss part and set up the the look of the timeline for the body we're going to say background equals and this is another color that they found so 3d a 3 c 5 which is a bluish color then for the font family we're going to be using montserrat sans serif and for the font size we're going to say 16 pixels and for the color of the text we're going to set it to black and then i'm going to lower the intensity to something like uh, let's say 53 that's good we don't want the we don't want it to be like full on black because of the contrast issues so we have a title class which is the heading for which i forgot to put the title class so let's go back and do that so for the timeline here we're gonna say class name equals title because we want to when when you're making a timeline you sort of don't want all of the timeline stuff to pop in all at once you want to some some sort of content in there i'm going to simulate it by having a huge title so the title is going to be a huge title with a font size of 15m and text align is going to be center and the font family is actually going to be a different font called Bebas Noye or whatever, Bebas, whatever, whatever, whatever says here, that's the other font. And it's also sans serif. Next, we're going to set up the H3 element with a padding top 
of uh, 0.25m just so we give it a little bit more of a separation from the top now we're going to add we're going to add a class which is this plugins uh, content class for the for the whole uh, content card thingy over here so it's called vertical timeline element content and inside we're going to uh, if you I don't know if it's visible that well but it has sort of a box shadow which is really really light gray which looks uh, pretty ugly on this blue uh, background so we're going to change that and we're going to say box shadow and we're gonna say 0 0 0.25 m 0 0.5 m 0 and then we are basically going to say uh, it's going to be black but with a lot of transparency and it's going to be uh, 0.25% and then another shadow which is going to be 0, 0 0.4 M 1.25 M 0 and once again almost black except it's going to be uh, not 0 0.25 but 0 uh, 15 and we need to set this to important so it can override the the current box shadow and now you can see it has like a proper dark shadow beneath it and we can add one more thing to it which is padding and we're going to say 2m 3m and once again important and this is just so it's not so so the card doesn't look so cramped up um, and if you remember for the date which is not visible right here but if I open this on the full page you can see this is the the date property that we've set set in our data file and we've set a date um, date class for it so to change that uh, we want to change its color to be a little more in, in blue tones uh, so we're gonna say color and there's a color here which is 201 251 255 and if i open up this in full screen you can see now that it is a bit lighter it's almost like a transparent uh white white bluish uh color so um because we don't want our date to be the, the centerpiece of each position this is something that is relevant but not something that the whoever is looking at your timeline doesn't need to focus on your date it need, they need to focus on the card on the title description and everything else so for the for the description if you remember we set up an id uh, description and we are going to give it some more margins 1.5 m 0 2 m 0 which is going to give us a bit more of a separation between the elements so this needs to be one logical uh, one logical piece and this needs to be another logical piece and this needs to be another logical piece so we just added a bit more separation between them and for the button we're going to set up a couple of things and a couple of different things for our different uh, for our two different buttons so all buttons are going to have text decoration of none because we don't want the underline and we are going to give them some more padding which is going to be 0 0.5 m 1 m and we're going to give them a bit of a border radius five pixels and the text color is going to be white now we're going to set up the work button and the school button classes so work button is just going to have a different background color which is going to be 0 6 d 6 a 0 and if you hover over it we want to set the background color to pretty much this except a bit 
uh, a bit darker. So it's going to be 0AC593, which is a similar shade of green, just a bit darker. We're going to do the same thing for the school button, except we're going to change this to obviously school button. And we're going to change this to the school button. And you can see it is set up, except we want to change this to a uh, to an orange color, which is F9C74F, uh, which is the same color as we used here for the icon. And for the hover color, we want to set up a bit darker shade, which is F3BC3C. And if I hover, you can see it's a bit darker shade. Now we are almost done uh, for the full browser view. We are pretty much done. This is the finished product, but we can do we can do a quick fix for the um, we can do a quick fix for the uh, date. This happens below the screen width of 1700 pixels, where you can see that the date has been uh, uh, the date is being pushed uh, to the left because it has float left and it's uh, pushing out the, the button really awkwardly, we can do a quick fix and also for that and also fix its visibility by setting up a media rule. And we're going to say media only screen and uh, max width is going to be 1700 pixels. And we need to target the the plugins specific class for the date timeline element uh, element date and inside we need to say display is block and we need to set important and we need to set float to be none and also important and this should fix it. So you can see that the date is now below. Now to make some more, uh, to give it some more visibility, we're going to say text is going to be, sorry, it's going to, the color is going to be black and we are also not going to go full black, but let's say, let's say 54. So it's a similar color to the other te text and, we are going to give it some more uh, separation by saying margin top equals 1.5 M. And that's all there is to it. So now we can see the, the date clearly uh, in the in mobile view and it's showing as expected in the browser view. You can modify this quite a bit because the plugin itself has a lot of different properties that you can use. You can turn off the animations so you can see when we do, when we refresh, everything pops in and when you scroll down, stuff is being animated. You can turn that off by setting animate to false. You can set up different class names. Also, you can change the layout. If you don't want it to be a two column layout, you can set it to be one column left or one column right, which is going to behave pretty much the same way as it does in mobile view. You can also set up the content style for the element and also for the little arrow that you see here. I didn't do that, but uh, you need to remember that if you change the color of the element itself, you should also probably change the color of the arrow unless you want them to be different colors, which is also fine. You can set up different stuff for the icons. If you click on icon, you can add a function. If you click on a time timeline element, you can also do a function. You can change positioning, set up a style, set up for uh, set up a style for uh, set up a class name for text. So quite a lot of versatility in one single plugin. And as you can see, we have like a nice timeline uh, with, uh, with some nice colors that you can use to put up on your website, on your portfolio or wherever you please. And that concludes this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please put them in the comments below. If you like the video, hit like and subscribe. It would really help me out a lot. As always, all the code is going to be available on my GitHub. My name is Alex and I'll see you in the next one.